learning tonight should be Le'ili Nishmas, Blima Bas Yirmiya, Aaron Ben Yirmiya Yoshua. Some should have an Aliyah. <laughs> we discussed a few weeks ago the words of the Rekeach. The Rekeach points out that at the beginning of Parshish B'chu when the Torah is not referring to the Klolos, the Toichecha, but the Torah is referring to the actual Brochos in B'chu Koisai Telechu, what's going to occur if a person actually follows the Torah, all the Brochos that will ensue. So the Rekeach points out over there that there is every single Ois, every single layer, letter in the Aleph base is in that small Parsha, those 11 Psukim, I believe, except for the Ois of except for the Ois of Samach. We pointed out that there's no Samach over there, and I think we brought in the name of Rav Moshe Shapiro, as I heard it quoted from Eber Reisman, that this indicates that the letter Samach often is an introduction to negative tidings, to negative Bisurais. In fact, the only two Psukim in Kola Tarakula, apparently, that begin with the letter Samach, are the le- the psukim of Slachna, please forgive us, Rabbi Shalom, and Surana Maher, when the eagle is happening. So both of them are considered to be psukim which are, again, bringing negative besurais, because the letter Samach apparently is associated with some sort of negativity. In fact, if you take a look at the Kinnais that we recite on Tishabov during the day of Tishabov, the kinnas are all in letter of in order of Aleph Beis. We actually start the first kinna with the Samach, with the Samach indicating that again, somehow the Khurban is connected to the Samach. And the way that Ramesh Shapir apparently explained it is that a Samach is a circle. A Samach is a circle, a cycle, and a person who lives his life without any growth, but just repeating again and again and again, the same cycle. He wakes up in the morning, goes to sleep at night, goes to work, same exact cycle again and again and again, without any growth, without any forward growth. So that's what brings about terrible basuros, and that's why the circle is considered to be a indication or expression of of negativity when it comes to something ruchni, because it's just repetitious again and again and again. Person is oilam kimin hago There's no growth. Person is going around and around in the same, repeating the same cycle again and again. And therefore, the samach indicates some sort of spiritual negativity. And that's why in the beginning of Parshas Bichu Kaisa, he explains that where with the Torah is talking about the brach. <coughs> The brachas, so therefore there's not going to be a samach, because the brachas come with people that don't live their lives as a cycle, but rather in a linear, in a growth-oriented direction. Now at the time, I was bothered by an obvious question, and the question is that there's another ekeach. It's another ekeach which points to the letter samach as seemingly being a very positive letter and also introducing positive spiritual tidings, and that is in our parsha where the Torah tells us of Birchas Kayanim, how the Kayanim are going to give the bracha of the, the Rebbein Yishlam to Kal Yisrael. And the Rekech points out over there that there are 60 Oisiyas, Keneged Samach, in the Birchas Kayanim. Birchas Kayanim is represented by the letter of Samach. This seemingly seems to be a very positive thing. So what is it? Is the Ois Samach something which is used to bring out negative bisurais, or is it something which is there for positive spiritual positivity, as we would think to, seem to assume when it comes to birchos kayanim. So I believe that the answer could be understood based on a comment or a drasha given by Rabbi Yitzhak Isaac Chavar. It's a drasha which we have mentioned in the past. It's a drasha which is entitled the drasha of the Nunin Hafuchen and a Drush Nifla. If you look at the Sefer of Rabbi Yitzhak Isaac Chavar, so it introduces this soft safe, this Drusha as a Drush Nifla, and that is perhaps the best way to describe it. A Drush Nifla, an absolutely unbelievable Drush, a lengthy Drush, 50 pages or so. But in it, he discusses and deals with the concept of the Nunin Hafuchen. We know Parshas Baleischa, there's going to be Vayihibin Tsoya Ha'aron, it's going to be divided, separated off from the rest of the Torah with 
a backwards nun, almost like brackets, but backwards brackets. And the question is, what is the significance of the nun in Hafuchin? Why are we using, as Bichazal tell us, that the reason for the nun in Hafuchin are to break up from Bisura Ra to Bisura Ra? We don't want to have three Peronias in a row, so therefore in the middle of the Peronias, in the middle of the bad news that has to do with Kal so we stick in a separate parsha, a separate sefer, if you will, of Vayihi bin Sayara. But why is it that though that sefer is specifically indicated and specifically marked off with the ois of Nun? This is what's bothering Rabbi Yislak Isaac Chover in this drasha. And he points out that it seems to be very, very significant. Don't think this is just a minor detail. He quotes the Zoya, where the Zoya says, Elu Beis Nunin, these two Nunin, that surround the parsha of Ayyib bin Sayyaram, Heim Kfoidoy Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Somehow, they represent the covet of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mamish. Vehein Ikoroy Shal Oilom, Lekach Bir Ois Yaakov Kain, Birech Es Bonov, V'yirgu L'Roiv, had his tar- Translate Vyirgu Laroiv Hashne Nunet Hagumai Ukenune Yama Siskun. There's very very extreme significance that is placed on these two nuns around by Yehibin Saron. And he says, What is the significance between these two nuns? Ritzak Isaac Chavar goes on to explain that if you take a look throughout the Torah, the letter of Samach, in fact, is a very positive letter. We know that in Ashrei, every letter is there except for the Nun, because Nun demonstrates Nefila. But where does the Rabbani Shalom pick us up after we were full? Soimech Hashem Lechol Noiflim. So the Samach, in fact, seems to be something which is very positive. Why does the Samach represent a positive um, spiritual state? What is about the Samach that the Samach is Soimech Hashem Lechol Noiflim? So explains Rabbi Yitzhak Ha'izichov very beautifully. That a Samach in fact is really a circle which is comprised of two nuns. If you have two nuns that are facing each other, you put them close enough together, so you come to a Samach. What are these two nunin that come together, join together and create a Samach? Explains Rabbi Yitzhak Ha'izich this is the essence of the relationship between Klali Yisrael and the Rabbi Nishim. When Klali Yisrael are facing the Rabbi Nishim, we are working as we are being mekabel from the Rabbi Nishim. We are working for the Rabbi Nishim, and therefore the Rabbi Nishim is providing for us that relationship, the relationship which is ideal for Klali Yisrael to be in a state with the Rabbi Nishim, a relationship where we do Avedas Hashem and the Rabbi Nishim provides for us what we need, that relationship is represented by a circle, is represented by a Samech, two nuns together. You have one nun representing Klal Yisrael, one nun representing the Rebbe Nishim. They come together and they form a beautiful relationship. Soimech Hashem lechol naifim. We had an afila, but our nun is facing the Rebbe Nishim. We come, we get, to get up, we step up. Now we are getting, repairing our relationship with the Rebbe Nishim. We come to a state of completeness, of shleim in our relationship with the Rebbe Nishim, that Soimech Hashem Lechol Hanoiflim. This is the idea of the two Kruvim. The two Nunin represent the two Kruvim. When we're facing each other, it creates a circle. And he goes through so many places throughout Tanakh where you clearly see the significance of this Ois Samach. He says as follows, V'hinei Ois HaSamach Hu Eagle, it's a circle, Sholem, has Shleimos, Kezeh Samach, Umeschalek Lebeiz Nunin, and it represents two separate Nunin, V'Ramaz Bezeh, She'af Begalusam, even when we're in Galos, Loime Astim, V'chiburim Hu Behester Ponim, we could have direct relationship with the Rabbi Nishlam, where the Rabbi Nishlam is, we are are clearly continuing our Vedas Hashem and the Rebbe Hashem is clearly watching over us. And that's the significance of the Samach. That's the significance of Soimech Hashem L'chol HaNoiflim. Ukemoyshev Beis HaMikdash Just like the Beis HaMikdash was the Mekor HaBracha. So even after Churban Beis HaMikdash we have Birchas Koyanim to provide us with the Bracha. What's Birchas Koyanim? The Samach Oisius of Birchas Koyanim to tell us that if we continue our 
our half of the deal, our nun is facing the Rebbe Nishlam, the Rebbe Nishlam's nun will provide what we need, and we will create that beautiful relationship, not to the same degree we had it during the Beis HaMikdash, but on a similar type level of at the relationship that we enjoyed with Beis HaMikdash. There, all the Birchas Koinim, the Samach Oisya, so the Birchas Koinim, representing that even in Galos, we could attain such a level, we could attain such a status, such a relationship with the Rebbe Nisham. And I realized, after understanding this drasha, that perhaps the stira, which we asked at the beginning, is Samach a positive thing? Is it Soimech Hashem L'chol Noiflem? Is it Birchas Koyenim? Or is it a negative thing? Is it Slach No Lo'ovoi Nazeh? Is it Suru No Maher? Is it Kinois? Which one is it? Perhaps the idea is as follows. Yes, it's true, as Rav Moshe Shapiro explained, that a cycle could be very, very damning. A cycle could be very damaging, and a cycle could be very dis- disruptive when it comes to spiritual growth. If a person lives in a never-ending, vicious cycle, as we would call it, so a person's not able to break out of it. But it all depends on the nature of the circle that you're living in. Yes, when it comes to the physical world, if the person is living in a cycle of just pure physicality. So that is a vicious cycle. And that is a cycle where a person could live his entire life and never appreciate that his entire life has simply no meaning. The entire circle of his life is entirely embedded in this physical world. He never breaks out to realize that there's more beyond this world. His entire existence, his entire circle, the entire cycle of his life exists with only in the construct and framework of this world. That's a meaningless life. That's a life which is a pathetic life. That's a sad life. He wakes up in the morning, every single day the same schedule. He goes to the office, he comes back, he eats three times a day, he goes to sleep again and again and again. And Rosh Hashanah comes and goes and it's the same chatom, the same chatom, the same cycle because his entire world His entire circle exists within this world. He's never able to break out and realize that there's a higher world. There's a higher calling. There's a way of adding meaning and purpose to this world. His entire circle is within this world. That type of circle, that type of cycle is very, very dangerous. That type of cycle is a vicious cycle, a cycle which brings no spiritual growth with it because a person is trapped within the fakeness, the dimion that is this world. And that is a very sad sad and scary demonstration of what the circle, the cycle, the samach could be. And if a person lives that way, so yes, the samach of his life leads to a suru no mahir. It leads to akina. It leads to churban beis hamikdash. It leads to suru no mahir. Slach no la'ovain hazeh. That's why in the entire story of creation, all sheishes you may be and until through vayichulu, you don't have the oy samach. Because that's talking about the creation of the physical world. And if your samach, your entire cycle of life, your circle is only within the physical world, so then that's a terrible thing. Therefore, within the creation of the physical world, the Rabbeinu Shalom doesn't even put the ois samach because the cycle of your life has to extend beyond the physical world. However, if a person lives a life of shleimus, a life of where his physical life, the physical world that he lives in, is only a chilek of his reality. But really, there's a much greater reality. There's a much more, there's much more real element to his circle. His physical life is just a nun, and then there's a nun on the opposite end, representing the spiritual world. He realized that his world, as he's experiencing it from the physical perspective, from our world, is only a piece of this greater circle that extends well beyond this world. If his samach does it, isn't within entirely within the frame of Olam Hazeh, but it extends beyond Olam Hazeh. And half of that Samach is the Nun of the Rabbi Nishlom of spirituality. So that Samach is a beautiful Samach. That Samach represents a relationship, a beautiful relationship with the Rabbi Nishlom, a give and take, a live, dynamic relationship with the Rabbi Nishlom. So it all depends on what the Samach is 
what the cycle of your life is. If it's a cycle, if it's a circle which only exists within the framework of physicality, that's a very damning type of samach. That's a life of no spiritual growth. That's a life where a person never breaks out of the reality of this fake world. He exists entirely within the dimion of this world. But if he lives the samach of Rabbi Yisak Isaac Chaver, the nun of his physical life is just half the picture, and he realized that his physical life in this world is is only half the picture and it corresponds to none of the Rabbeinu Shalom and the Samach includes the spiritual, the Ruchnias so that's a beautiful Samach, that's a beautiful circle, that's the Samach of Birchas Koyenim as we pointed out so many times Birchas Koyenim itself says Rabbi Yosef Alba, the Sefer Ikrim Birchas Koyenim itself Yivarechecha Hashem V'Yishmerecha says Rabbi Yosef Alba, is referring to asking the Rabbeinu Shalom for Hatzlocha Begashmias, Yivarechecha, give us Bracha, Yivarecha Hashem V'Yishmerecha, Yoyer Hashem Pana Ve'lech V'Chunecha is talking to the Rabbani Shalom for Hatzlacha in Ruchniyaz, in Birchaz Kainim we ask the Rabbani Shalom first for Hatzlacha in Gashmiyaz, then we turn to the Rabbani Shalom and say we need Hatzlacha in Ruchniyaz but these two shouldn't be a double life, it shouldn't be two separate aspects of, our te- of ourselves, it should be one big life, it should be a life where none, half the life is the physical spark, but we appreciate that the physical part is there just to support the other half of the nun, the spiritual part. Make shalom between the Yivarechecha, the Gashmias, and the Yor Hashem, and the Ruchnias. Don't allow it to be two separate lives, that when we go to the office, we're engaging in our Gashmias life, and that's a ends in itself and we go to shul and we learn Torah so that's a, our lives of, of Ruchnius and that's a separate life but make it that the two come together V'yosem l'chashalom that are Ruchnius and Gashmius to be one big picture one big circle two nuns that come together that's the Yisoyed of Birchas Koyenim we're asking the Rabbani to allow us to live larger lives, bigger lives, the lives with a large circle, a big samech, soimech Hashem lechol hanoifim, to appreciate that the little life, physical, the physical aspect of our lives is just part of the puzzle. It's just a piece of the puzzle. It's not the entire circle, but there's a much bigger circle. This is a piece of the puzzle, but a piece of the circle. But the other half of the circle is the nun of the Rabbeinu Shalom, Soimei Hashem Lechol Neiflin, the beautiful union that takes place between Klal Yisrael as a whole and Klal Yisrael's individuals. When they confront the Rabbeinu Shalom, when they have that beautiful relationship with the Rabbeinu Shalom, where we provide Kaviyachal for the Rabbeinu Shalom with our Avedis Hashem, and the Rabbeinu Shalom responds with his tremendous bracha, that's the real circle of life. That's the beautiful Samach. That's the Soimei Hashem Lechol Hanoiflim. That's the Samach which which we all try, chase after and try to live, rather than the Samach Halila of Slach Nala Oven Hazer, the Samach of Sur Mahir, the Samach of our lives, it's the Samach of the 60 Oisias of Birchas Kayan.